Can game theory help you in day-to-day -day life? And what on earth is game theory? Well, watch to find out. The first thing you'll hear about game theory is no doubt the prisoner's dilemma. This is a problem in which two prisoners who are meant to have committed a crime have been arrested. They're put in separate rooms and they're given a series of options. One of them is don't confess and don't blame the other person. You'll get five years in prison. The next is blame the other person. They'll get 20 years and you will walk free. However, if both of the prisoners blame the other person, you'll both get 10 years. So what do you do? Well, I'll explain that later as a teaser to keep you watching. Now, game theory can go wrong. And that's like an example would be when the US government banned smoking advertising. And paradoxically, the profits then increased. And this is because in the past, Tobacco companies were spending lots of money on advertising with the Marlboro Cowboy and things, and they were actually competing with each other for the same market share. Also, what was happening is that the US government had their own anti-smoking campaign. However, after advertising was scrapped, the US government thought, well, we don't need to spend money on the anti-smoking campaign. So therefore, um, the actual tobacco industry gained overall because instead of competing with each other, the, form, the firms were then cooperating, expanding the number of people smoking. Smoking is really bad as a doctor. I feel I have that obligation to tell you, please do not smoke. Also, I would advise not vaping. Uh, but anyway, going back to game theory, there's different ways so in life, many interactions could be thought of as a game, and some of them are mutually assured destruction games. These are things where each other could wipe the other opponent out. And you think of like the Cold War as an example. And if uh, Regan put a defense system in place, that may not give more defense because the opposing side will think, look what they've done we'll have to up our firepower. So there's always an unintended consequence. Fortunately, when uh, Regan did mention a, a defense system, I believe the Russians dismissed this idea as fanciful. Nash theory is another one. And that's that everybody plays the game to profit themselves the most. Rollback theory is when competitors respond in a way that relates to previous moves. So in essence, if you've done that before, I'm now taking this action. Now, cooperation is important in life and in almost all games, and it can be obtained from two aspects. And if you can get these two aspects right, I guarantee you, you'll get cooperation. And what are they, you'll say, Chris? Well, this is the intrinsic desire to cooperate. And the other is the power to push. And in essence, if somebody wants to cooperate, they're likely to cooperate. And if you've got the power to push them to cooperate as well, then you'll make sure they will. Which of these is more important? Unsurprisingly, the intrinsic desire. There's a principle of game theory. There were actual uh, problems put out in which people competed and came up with complex solutions to think what's the best strategy to overcome this problem. Now tit for tat is actually a simple strategy and won two times in a row. So let me tell you about this best game theory tactic that you can use in life and it will help you. It's simple. It's be quick to trust, quick to punish, and quick to forgive. And if we can all adopt that attitude, in theory there would be a gradual shift around the world with everybody adopting a similar tactic, which would be great because we'd all be quick to trust each other more and potentially help each other. Let's come back to the prisoner's dilemma. So now I've told you about game theory, we'll analyze it in these five steps. If you've got any dilemma, you think, can you change the payoffs? Secondly, can you merge and cooperate to form a cartel that is in both players' mutual interest? Thirdly, 
Are there dynamic moves in which the case, in, in which case the threat of punishment will stop the other person's moves or do simultaneous moves occur at once? Is this a sequential game, fourthly, you're thinking, in which one person actually has the last move and therefore they have the threat to stop previous moves? And fifthly, is it a continuous game or a one-off? So looking at the prisoner's dilemma from that aspect, it's a one-off, blinded game that's non-sequential, in which the payoffs can't be changed and you're unable to cooperate with the other player. And we're meant to think it's a one-off because after you're punished for a crime, of course, you'd never do that again. However, clearly the correct answer is to both take five years. And that's where this threat of punishment comes in. And that would be the third aspect here. Clearly nobody likes a grass, and if you're going to dob your mate in, you're then going to go and get punishment. So, don't dob your mate in would be the thing. Take five years each. That's the correct answer, and it's because of the framework saying there's the threat of punishment. There you go. Hope you've enjoyed that. I'm summarising plenty of books, so uh, feel free to subscribe.